unlimited hydroplanes, monsters of the waterway, locked in a battle for speed and control of the frontier of the unknown. Explorers, daredevils, pioneers in a machine that defies classification. Is it a boat that flies, or is it a plane that skims a liquid wild blue yonder? What are the limits of its velocity? No one knows. But one man seeks the answers, Bernie Little, obsessed by a dream to find the far side of fast, to campaign the ultimate boat, to achieve the speed of lightning, the sound of thunder. We waited and look at that one. people go to doctors. I don't know any doctors. I love the water. Salt water is the greatest healing power in the world. Perhaps it is for Bernie Little because he's king of the water, unquestionably king of the water's fastest sport, unlimited hydroplane racing. He has the soul of the ancient mariner and the passion of A.J. Foyt. For Bernie Little loves the water but loves it best as a raceway when the growl of hydroplanes rip the calm and churn the blue into a wall of white. These are cats on the prowl, snarling, scratching, stalking, in pursuit of a quarry they can never catch, the dreams of Bernie Little. As the owner of Hydroplanes Unlimited, he is the most powerful man in hydroplane racing the winner of more than 50 races and eight world championships in 20 years. Yet, it is not enough. And his passion for more makes him the sport's central attraction. Everybody says to me that uh, the best show is on the dock watching me when my boat's out there, and I guess I don't realize what I'm doing. I'm just really involved in that boat. We can talk to the driver, and I've never put a headset on because I talk to him from the dock. <laughs> and be it good or be it bad. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of people say, geez, Bernie, I think he heard you. I said, no, I think it's mental telepathy. <laughs> Driver Jim Cropfeld. Well, Bernie's a, he, he's a very energetic person. He's, uh, he's out to be number one in anything that he does, uh, whether it's boat racing or in business, selling his yachts or his, with his airplanes or his uh, little motor scooters or whatever. And he, uh, his enthusiasm just rolls right on over into the team here. And uh, we're, we're, we strive to be number one in the, He's kind of the kingpin of our whole operation right here with the Miss Budweiser. Winning his national championship that he has earned throughout the years has not come easily, and uh, uh, Bernie demands a lot of people, and uh, that's what it takes to uh, make a machine like this run, and um, it, it doesn't come easy, and Bernie uh, makes it that way. So, uh, But the dedication of Bernie Little's own team is matched by the respect and admiration of his rivals. Bernie Little is unlimited hydroplane racing. Uh, his generosity, his devotion to this sport, what he has put into this sport far exceeds what he's taken out, and he's one of the winningest owners there is. He's been in this sport, I think, 23 or 24 years now, and he wants every win just as bad as he won the last one. You'd think after that many years, the guy'd run out of a little steam, but he's always prepared, and he's tough, and boy, he's tough to beat, but we'll beat him. That's everyone's goal, to beat Bernie Little. But it's his goal to beat the record books, to be faster, and to be safer. His introduction of the fully enclosed hydroplane cockpit is part of his effort to protect all drivers. For Bernie Little understands risks. He was once a barnstorming stunt pilot and a Navy hero in World War II. He also understands the good life. He seems to control his fate and fortune as easily as he controls the wheel of his luxury speedboat. But Bernie Little didn't inherit his wealth. He made it the hard way. He worked for it. Uh, all I can remember is during the Depression and everything, I, I just wanted a lot out of life. And, uh, uh, and I just felt the only way I'd get that was get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, run my paper routes, run another one at 5 o'clock at night, and snow up to my knees up in Ohio. And uh, that seemed like it was worthwhile, so I caddied on Sundays, I washed and waxed automobiles. I did whatever I could do to make some money to put aside for when I was old enough to do some of the things I wanted to do. What Bernie Little did was build an empire of sport and business so vast it requires a private jet to oversee. He sells cars, boats, and beer. 
he mingles easily with the world's most powerful and important people. Because Bernie Little, a man who never completed high school, loves people as much as he loves work. Making friends is our business. So where better than on the water? This is where we spend so much time. I buy and sell these yachts, and uh, I buy them and completely redo them, and interior-wise, exterior-wise. And when I'm done, this is a finished project. And then uh, I put it out and sell it. I've sold uh, probably a half a dozen this year. I always was taught if you did business in millions, you'll make millions. Or hundreds, you'll make hundreds. So the only thing is, if you make a mistake here, you're in real trouble. <laughs> uh, but. When it comes down to dollars and cents, uh, that never really bothered me much. Uh, I just charge full speed ahead, and uh, whatever comes out down at the bottom, that's fine. It's fine because Bernie Little has more than the trappings of boats, planes, and a fleet of elegant cars. He has made millions without losing his basic values along the way. Well, for me to define success, I think that it first starts at home. I think it starts with your family. Success to me is having a very happy marriage and a very happy family that have happy marriages and children. To me, that's the most successful thing you can have in this world. And anything beyond that just comes with life. Bernie Little approaches life the way he approaches hydroplane racing, striving to be everyone's friend, but no one's fool. Determined to be and to have the best. Three, two, two one. one. The countdown to racing. The fastest 10 Unlimiteds qualify to race at each event. First, they compete in two preliminary heats. Then the five boats accumulating the most points duel in the championship heat. Each heat begins with a side-by-side -side full throttle sprint for the starting line. A boat that lags behind at the sound of the gun has virtually no chance of winning the heat. While a boat that crosses the line early must run an extra lap. So even before the race begins officially, it has begun tactically. The hydroplanes rehearsing their charge and jockeying for lanes. The inside is the shortest loop, but the outside allows for higher speed and the freedom to swing wide without fear of a collision. On the longest liquid ovals, 2.5 miles, speeds will top 185 miles per hour, 140 and more in the turns. All this on a surface that moves and ripples and changes with every breeze. All this in a boat that steers unpredictably at best, in a world where danger strikes without warning. Now pulls the rest, now takes the lead. Uh, my goal is not faster, faster, but safer, safer. The race courses used to be three mile. We cut them to two and a half. Now we've got them at two mile. And what it does, instead of it sitting up there airing that boat out. The spectators get to see the same thing, only they're not hanging out flying that boat. But it is a boat that flies, riding currents of water instead of air on its stubby wings. Even its heart is from the sky, the Rolls-Royce Griffin V-12, the mighty power source of the Spitfires that patrol the English Channel in World War II. Bernie Little bought every Griffin he could find, $40,000 for 4,000 horsepower. Then them to combat form, not for battles in the air, but on the water, in hydroplanes. And then he dressed his drivers like pilots and shielded them under the canopy of an F-16. But just as Spitfires have given way to jets, the Griffin has yielded to a new generation, a hydroplane with the power of another bird of prey, the turbine of the Chinook helicopter. This is the future of hydroplanes, and Bernie Little's design shop in Seattle is in the vanguard employing the science of aerospace to challenge the seas of hydrospace. This is his boat for the new campaign. Suspended above the water, it resembles an eagle ready to attack. Its sponsons are wings folded in for streamlined flight. The skid fin, a protruding talon. The cockpit, the eagle's sparkling eye. She will hover over the water to make her attack. An assault on the record books. For whatever you call her, Miss Budweiser is a vessel like none before. We took a whole year and said, we're not going to worry where we finish, how we finish. We wanted to really make a driver safe. So we innovated a closed cockpit that's never been done in the history of the sport. 
We have an escape hatch out the bottom, one out the top. He's breathing air like a diver breathes, so he can live under the water if he goes under. We build a squirrel cage around him, a roll bar around him. He has fluid flowing through his suit to keep him cool in there. And uh, we really felt that that was the thing to do for unlimited hydroplane racing. What began in 1963 when Bernie Little saw Guy Lombardo's four-seater hydroplane and bought it on a whim has evolved into this, a dream and a million-dollar gamble on design. Everything learned in the past now aims into the future, dancing over the water in a beautiful but perilous ballet. In her maiden voyage, the new hydroplane surpasses with colors flying. But the real test will be the summer-long racing campaign. It's summertime, summertime, sun, sun, summertime, 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 summertime. Hot days and cool water. Those lazy summer afternoons, enjoying the irresistible allure of the beach, the shore, and the riverbank. Bring your pets, your kids, and your cooler, and bring your sense of awe because you won't believe the fastest boats in the world, the unlimited hydroplanes, as they crisscross the country in a quest for supremacy on the water. The magic of unlimited racing to me and, and the thousands, tens of thousands of spectators that we see on the shores every week we race is that the boats have an ability to, to uh, bring goosebumps up and down everybody's body. It's, it's a magic electricity, it's in the air. Every time one of the boats runs out there, you see the people rush to the side of the shore to watch them. That, uh, it's a magic no other sport offers. We offer a proximity to the fans where they can come and see the racing drivers, the teams, the, uh, the equipment right up front. There's not a bad seat in the house here. Our race course is stretched out over two to two and a half miles on lakes and on river fronts. How do you find a bad seat? And we're cheap. By today's standards of entertainment, for three or four dollars, and sometimes for even free, you can bring your entire family and watch a day of professional racing for virtually nothing. Yeah, I think hydroplane is a, exciting and it's a challenge. You know, you're going around the course and you're running against the water, the current, and the thrill of just being in the front. There's an extra element of danger because it's not just on the road, you know. It's, not, it's in the water, it's, it's fast, it's a lot of speed, a lot of speed. Not just going around the curves, corners, but the hydro, straight and fast. The excitement of the, the drivers coming close and uh, the five of them coming through this tight fourth curve, and it's just unreal. The people in Madison are very proud to have their own higher plane, and even if it doesn't do well, it's, they like to cheer it on. And the kids like it especially because it's so fast. Yeah, I'm right, so loud. <laughs> it's so loud. You know, well, when they come by, the sound is so loud that your ears and chest vibrate, and it's really loud. You, when they're coming by real fast like that, you can feel in your stomach. It just you feel like you're almost there. The seats are great. It's really exciting. It's like they're right in your front yard. And it's a good time to get the whole family together and have a fun day in the sun. 